Hey, Shalom, Shalom. First and foremost, I'd like to give all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles, double honors to the bishops, teachers, elders alike that's teaching this word in truth and sincerity, mainly starting with the men of Great Millstone, better known as GMS, who taught me this 144% truth. And uh, peace and salutations unto the hopeful elect that be like the speckled bird, you Israelite foreigners scattered across the four corners of the earth. And um, title of this lesson is going to be dealing with the uh, the standard of the new moon. OK, or I should say that what is the standard of keeping the new moon? In other words, how do we keep it? Um, and the reason why um, I want to do this topic is because I had a uh, person comment on one of my videos that I posted up on TikTok about uh, a couple of days ago. And the comment that this individual pointed out, he said that um, the new moon is actually the full moon. And you get a lot of bug outs, all right? You get a lot of people uh, that, that are saying that. And it's a shame. Well, I shouldn't say it's a shame, but uh, when you come into this truth, it's very nerve wracking because, you know, when when the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, through His Son, Yahweh Shai, blesses um, you to open up your eyes so that you can see and to open up your ears so that you can hear, uh, to see the full truth, when you try to you know, help others, okay, in terms of other Israelites that are coming into the truth to understand the actual full truth, you kind of get a little bit frustrated that they can't get it the way that you get it. And we've all been there, right? But something as far as to go out of your way to say that the new moon isn't is exactly the full moon, that's just playing right out ignorance. For you to go as, as so far to say that just shows me that you're too lazy to go and even do your own research. All right. So I don't want to make this too long, but I just want to hit a couple of points. OK, going to, you know, some definitions or some words, hit a few scriptures and be done with it. So what I have here is a uh, and some of you guys may have seen this exact same image on my TikTok, but I'm going to go through it a little further. All right. This is a Wikipedia version. And it says in astronomy, the new moon is the first lunar phase okay and for those of you who don't know the hebrew israelites going back into the ancient days all right their calendar was based upon all right a lunar cycle okay now it says here when the moon and the sun have the same uh, ecliptic longitude at this phase the lunar disk is not visible to the unaided eye but its presence may be detected because it occults stars behind it. So as you can see in the image above, this is what the moon looks like when it's in a new phase. OK, now, according to the scriptures, the, the beginning of the month is the new moon. OK, so in other words, when the new moon comes in, that marks not only the beginning of your month, but also the first day. Right. Now, under the picture, it says a simulated image of the traditionally defined new moon, the earliest visible waxing crescent, lower right, which signals the start of a new month in many lunar and uh, lunisolar calendars. OK, now the Hebrew Israelites going back in the ancient world, they didn't base their calendar system off, or, uh, off what they call today a uh, solar uh, calendar. No, they based it off a lunar cycle calendar. OK, and it tells you that in a creation story, when you get Genesis, the first chapter, which uh, Yahweh Ratazah, which means Lord willing, we can grab that in this lesson. It goes on to say at new moon, mostly earth light illuminates the near side of the moon. So if you have a look at the picture on the right hand side, you can just barely see that little small light of crescent. Right. That is a new moon. That is not a full moon. OK. It's not a full moon. Now, it says here, the original meaning of the term new moon, which is still sometimes used in uh, calendric, uh, calendrical, uh, non-astronomical contexts, is the first visible crescent of the moon after conjunction with the sun. This thin waxing crescent is briefly and faintly visible as the moon gets lower in the western sky after sunset. The precise time and even the date of the appearance of the new moon by this definition will be influenced by geo geographical 
location of the observer. The first crescent marks the beginning of the month in the Islamic calendar and in some lunisolar calendars such as the Hebrew calendar. In the Chinese calendar, the beginning of the month is marked by the dark moon. In other words, new moon, because it's, it's uh, not visible to the naked eye. The last visible crescent of a uh, wani moon. It says the astronomical new moon, sometimes known as the dark moon, to avoid confusion, occurs by def definition at the moment of conjunction and ecliptical longitude with the sun, when the moon is invisible from the earth. This moment is unique and does not depend on location and in certain circumstances, it coincides with a solar eclipse. OK, so now now you guys have an understanding what the new moon is. OK, and how it's actually determined. And, and, you know, and it's very simple when a new moon comes in, it comes in once a month. The word month, OK, comes from the word moon. All right. And that's in the Apocrypha, which Lord willing, we can grab that as well. But every time a new moon comes in, all right, it is be it is known as the beginning of the month. So that will be declared as your first day. OK, so now let's look up what a full moon is so we can have the correct understanding. And we're going to get some more definitions because some of y'all will say, oh, that was wit that was written in Wikipedia. There's, you know, Wikipedia can be false information. All right, cool. We're going to get some other definitions. OK, now this says. The full moon is the lunar phase when the moon appears fully illuminated from Earth's perspective, though there's still some dark section when there isn't a lunar eclipse. This occurs when Earth is located between the sun and the moon, when the ecliptic longitudes of the sun and the moon differ by 180 degrees. This means that the lunar hemisphere facing Earth, the near side, is completely sunlit and appears as an approximately circular disk, the full moon occurs roughly once a month, okay? Because what happens is uh, when the new moon comes in, which we know that to be the beginning of the month, the first day of the month, okay? Right around between the 14th to the 15th day of the month, that's when the full moon comes in. That lets you know right there that you're halfway through the month. And as you can see, the full moon represents when the, when the moon is full, fully illuminated with her light. OK, showing you that it is a big difference between a, you know, full moon and a new moon. The full moon is not the new moon. For those of you who are unlearned, I'm going to say it one more time. The full moon is not the new moon. It is very simple. I don't know why we have to keep going through this, but we understand OK, we have a lot of, you know, brothers and sisters out there that are not too bright. OK, and we have to, you know, do these lessons over and over. All right. I understand some of you, uh, you know, Akim and Akwath, this may be repetitive, but, you know, we get new people that come into the faith. So we have to keep going over this time and time again. OK, so now what I want to do, <clears throat> actually, before we get the scriptures. Right. Let's look it up real quick. Let me see. I got one right here. Uh, we'll read this definition right here and then we'll also get it in the Merriam-Webster dictionary. All right. For those of you who feel that Wikipedia is not a trusted source. But uh, in Google, it says new moon. All right. New moon. It says the phase of the moon at which the moon, as viewed from Earth, does not appear to be illuminated by the sun. In other words, it is not a full moon because a full moon is fully illuminated, whereas a new moon is not. It does not appear. It says the new phase marks the beginning of a single revolution of the moon around the earth. All right. Number two, the period of the moon when such a moon occurs, the phase of the moon when it is in conjunction with the sun. That's definition number two. So same thing as we read in Wikipedia. And this is under the American Heritage Dictionary. All right. So let's see what it means in the Merriam Dictionary. OK. Same thing. New moon. It says at number one, the moon's phase when it is in conjunction with the sun so that its dark side is toward the earth. That's the reason why you can't see it. OK. That's what makes it a new moon. 
Also, the thin crescent moon seen shortly after the sunset for a few days after the actual occurrence of the new moon. So once again, if I can pull it up, this is what it's talking about. OK, you see that little small crescent. That's when you can just barely see it. OK, and the only way you can see it is if you, you know, if you have a day where just before the sun comes up, um, sometimes you can see it. Um, just that little tiny crescent, that's a new moon, okay? When it's like fully not visible, but you can just barely see it, that's a new moon. That is not a full moon, okay? So just to get back to the point, now watch this. Number two, it says the beginning of each Jewish month marked by a special uh, liturgy, liturgy, if I pronounce that right, Okay? In other words, when you look up that word liturgy, basically it's a form of uh, formulary according to which public religions worships, especially Christian worship, is conducted in ancient Greece, a public office or duty performed voluntarily by a rich atheian. All right. So it's just when a gathering comes together in a form of a uh, religious worship. All right. Uh, to conduct certain, you know, um, Things that are carried out pertaining to that worship. Now, why did it says the beginning of each Jewish month marked by special liturgy? Now let's go into scripture. All right. So we're going to go to Numbers chapter 10 and we're going to read verse 10. I'm going to mark it for you so you guys can see. All right. This is Numbers chapter 10, verse 10. And it reads also in the day of your gladness and in your solemn days. And in the beginnings of your months, ye shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings, that they may be to you for a memorial before your power. I am Yahweh, your power. Now, when you go into the strong uh, concordance, which a lot of you should be doing, all right, to get a more understanding of what you're reading. And when you look up of your months, Strong's age 2320. Chodesh. Chodesh. Right? And it says what? The new moon. Month. Monthly. The first day of the month. The lunar month. Once again, the Hebrew Israelites in the ancient days went by the lunar calendar. So the first day of the month, okay? What is the standard to measure the first day of the month? That standard represents the new moon. OK, it's very simple. So if the if the standard to measure the first day is is it goes uh, goes about the new moon. OK, how are we meant to keep the Sabbath? Because what did the Heavenly Father say? Right. Let's get Exodus, the 20th chapter. We we'll start at verse uh, eight. It says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord Yahweh thy power, right? So what would happen is, let's say if the new moon, which is actually today, Thursday night uh, sundown to Friday night sundown and wherever you may be, Shabbat Shalom, happy uh, Sabbath, right? We're going to use this perfect uh, um, time to use this as, as an example because today is the Sabbath. So the new moon Sabbath is today, okay? July 28th, Thursday evening. You can even look up the lunar calendar. Matter of fact, let me not talk about it. Let's <laughs> look it up right now. Right? Let's type in lunar calendar. And uh, let me see. Let me choose one. Let's see if this will let's see if this is a good one. And just bear with me. I'm just going off the top of the head real quick. All right. And oh, look at that. Right. Now. Notice. Let me see. Right there where I have it highlighted, it says moon phase, lunar phase. This is a waxing crescent. So this will be a new moon. Now, when you go up, it tells us right here. It says new moon, July 28th. OK, at 554 p.m., which is um, sundown. OK, evening. OK, so 
right now it's the new moon. So if it's the new moon, that means that it's actually a Sabbath day. And how do we know that? Well, let's go back to numbers. Okay. Chapter 10 and read verse 10 again. It says, also in the day of your gladness and in your solemn days and in the beginnings of your months, ye shall blow with the trumpets over your burnt offerings and over the sacrifices of your peace offerings that ye may be to you for a memorial before your power. I am Yahweh. Now we have a law in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Okay. Leviticus 23, verse 23. And it says, in the Lord Yahweh, Spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, okay, uh, which is September for us, if you're going by the Gregorian calendar, in the first day of the month. Now, remember, we looked up what month is, is Kadesh, which is the new moon, which represents the first day, right? Ye shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets and holy convocation, okay? Now, the new moon ushers in the Sabbath. Why? Because the moon appoints our solemn feast days. OK, now. We, now, how do we know that? Let's grab two scriptures. Let's go to Genesis, the first chapter, starting at verse 14. It says in the Allahayim or the powers said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons. And for days and years, showing you once again, OK, when you go into the creation story. All right. Moses was given the understanding on Mount Sinai on how everything was set up from the beginning. All right. He's given us the breakdown. OK, the lights that were created in the sky, such as the stars, the moon, the sun, they all play a part in how we determine our days, our seasons that we're in, how we are able to count the years. And uh, different celestial signs in the heavens. OK, verse 15, it says, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And the Allahayim or the powers made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. So these lights, OK, that the Allahayim, the powers, which are the angels and Yahweh Shai. OK, when they were there at that time uh, doing a creation. All right. Setting up everything from the foundations of the world. OK, this is the order. All right. That these uh, ordinances were set up for uh, set up with from the beginning. Now, let's grab the Apocrypha really quickly. OK. And let's grab Sirach chapter 43 to get some more understanding. And verse six, it says he made the moon. Also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. Verse seven. Here's the point from the moon is the sign of feast, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. So the, the moon it, uh, gives uh, is based upon showing us a sign of when we are to keep our appointed feast. OK, when when we are to keep the Sabbath. And as I said, the question is, if we now know, OK, that the new moon represents that standard of measuring when the first day is. And we know that based upon a new moon represents the, the beginning of the month. How are we able to measure the standard of when the Sabbath comes in? And this is why a lot of brothers, they go off thinking that the Sabbath is every Friday night, sundown to Saturday, uh, Saturday, sundown. First of all, nowhere in the Bible are you going to see the word Friday or Saturday. And this is what happens when you don't go and research and do your due diligence to cross reference things that you read outside to link up, you know, what we read in the scriptures. OK. Verse eight, it says the month is called after her name. Right. Because the word month comes from the word moon increasing wonderfully in her changing, being an instrument of the armies above shining in the firmament of heaven. Now, let's grab Psalms chapter 81 and verse three. It says, blow up the trumpet in the new moon, the beginning of the month, the first day in the time appointed on our solemn feast day. OK, because the new moon ushers in the Sabbath. 
from the new moon, okay, that is a Sabbath, all right? And then what you do is you account seven days from that date, okay, which, to give you an example, if Thursday, July 28th, all right, which let's go back to it, as we see here is a new moon, and notice the picture the moon is not fully illuminated, showing you that it is not a full moon. It is a new moon. OK, so if we know that it is a new moon, it is a Sabbath. It's a Sabbath day. So what will happen is from Thursday night, uh, sundown to Friday night, sundown will be day one. And you will count your six days until you come all the way back to Thursday night next week. OK, you will get to Thursday night next week. And guess what? That will be your your Sabbath. OK. The new moon determines your Sabbath for the month, Wh whichever day the new moon falls in, that will be your Sabbath for the remaining four weeks until the next new moon phase comes in to appoint you on your solemn feast days. It's that simple. It's not it's, this is not hard to understand. OK, but, you know, for the sake of you know, being diligent in this work and in this ministry and helping the brotherhood. Like, like I said, you know, we get people that are come just, you know, learning and they're coming into the faith. All right. And we have to take the time to, to keep, to continue to go over this time and time again. So let's finish up with uh, Amos. All right. Chapter eight and verse five, it says, um, saying, when will the new moon be gone? that we may sell corn. Now, why are they saying to the prophet, when will the new moon be gone so that we may sell corn? Because remember, we read in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, verse 23, what was the law? And Yahweh spake unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Israel saying, in the seventh month and the first day of the month, ye shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing the trumpets. Now, don't get simple, okay? Even though it's telling you a particular month being of the seventh month, we're supposed to, uh, you know, blow, you know, the Trump of Memorial only for that particular month. Well, the new moon. OK, we always uh, make a feast and, and, and sit down. Well, I shouldn't say make a feast. So I forgive me. But to give you an example, let's go to when you type in new moon. OK, first Samuel. Uh chapter 20, verse five, it says, and David, which is King David said unto Jonathan, behold, tomorrow is the new moon and I shall not fail to sit with the king at meat, but let me go that I may uh, hide myself in the field unto the third day at evening. Okay. Because every new moon, they will what? Blow the trumpet. Okay. And they would, they would, uh, you know, make a feast. All right. And showing you that this is a shadow of what's to come in the kingdom, because even though we're right now, we're just rehearsing the righteous acts on when to keep it. OK, when we get in the kingdom, we're going to get the true understanding on how to keep the Sabbath and how to understand the celestial signs within the skies. We're going to get all of that back in the kingdom. This is Isaiah chapter 66, verse 23. It says, and it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, said the Lord Yahweh. So, as I said, in the kingdom, OK, we are going to get the full understanding on how we are meant to celebrate it and keep it. It's just right now on this side, we are just rehearsing the righteous acts, man. It's that simple. It's not that hard. OK, so that's all I wanted to get on this. Lord willing, this lesson was edifying until the next time. Shalom.